that are signing on. This should be a great webinar. We're excited to learn a little bit about um, that uh, person you told us about earlier that is now the highest reviewed person according to Dealer Raider. So we're very, very excited and very privileged to have you joining us today. Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, it's about a minute till here, so I see attendees are starting to pop on the webinar, and so I know we're going to get started here with a formal presentation in just a moment. Um, and then I saw a question come through from Corey. Corey wanted to know as far as mobile-friendly sites, which are the most mobile-friendly review sites? So Corey will, will be addressing that as well during the presentation. That's a fantastic question. If you are a Periscoper and you have questions about reviews, and you want to know how to get your customers to give you reviews, how to make the review written in such a way that it generates more interest or separates you from your competition in the marketplace. You know, what should we ask customers to write in the review? We're going to talk about that today as well. Um, and then ultimately how to turn reviews into some, uh, some appointments and some sales. It's 1 o'clock, gentlemen. I'm going to turn it over to you and let you formally start the broadcast and start the webinar. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. My name is Peter Webdock Martin, and we are talking to you from our studio in Baltimore, Maryland. Today with us, we have, of course, uh, our normal um, Ron Mad Max, who uh, is our resident champion, and we also have a special guest with us today. Jonathan Dawson from Cellcology. That's right. And, Glad to be here. And Jonathan, we are so excited to have you with us. And as we get started, I just want to let everybody know that we are going to be uh, taking questions at the end, so if you have any questions, please, uh, you can see on the screen there where you can leave the questions, give the questions to us. We will um, answer your questions at the end, and this presentation we will give you as well. If for some reason you like what you see and you want more information, feel free to email myself or Jonathan or Ron, and we will send you a copy of the presentation. We'll give you our contact information at the end of the presentation as well. But, you know, the first screen, you know, is one of our screens we always like to talk about, but what we want to do today since we have Jonathan with us. Jonathan, why don't you, before we really get into the overall presentation, why don't you just tell everybody about who you are, a little bit about what you do, and you've got some incredible success stories. And what we want to try and do today in this webinar is to provide some tips that the people listening to us today can take back, that they can learn from you and your expertise and go back and start improving their online reputation and selling more cars. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that, uh, Peter. Yeah, the, by way of introduction, for those of you who may not know who I am, I'm Jonathan Dawson, founder of Cellcology. Cellcology is the hybrid of selling through psychology, and my company and my focus, my passion, is to try to save the world one salesperson at a time by teaching them how to think like a customer but still be a salesperson, how to understand the psychology and the emotional side of the process um, without ever elevating the process over the person. I think it's a people business before it's anything else. And so how do we help our sales teams, our managers, become more effective tapping into that psychological and emotional road to the sale? My answer to that question is, of course, teaching the psychology of sales and marketing. Now, under the umbrella of Cellcology, when we teach psychology of sales and psychology of marketing, under the marketing uh, campaigns or the marketing initiatives, the marketing training that we focus on, reviews is a, is a and very significant, important aspect of that. And the reason why is because in psychology of sales, social proof or social influence is one of the highest influencers of what causes someone to take action, and in this case, to buy. We as a society, as, as basically the wiring of human nature is that we want to look for approval in what other people have already done in order to help us understand what we should do. We look for clues, social clues. We look for that in our fashion. We look for that in what movies we should watch. We look for that in what restaurants we should go to. And certainly using reviews, we look for that in which companies we should do business with. And in this case, the power of reviews uh, on, a, on a person's influencing them to do business with you is so significant and yet so under understood by the average salesperson or, or manager. So as a psychologist, as a, somebody who teaches psychology of selling, a review is a huge part of that. And in working with dealers and sales managers across the country, that's something I want uh, them to all understand and embrace. And, and if I can, uh, real quick, Peter, I want to start by sharing what I think is the the critical linchpin for this whole um, concept of helping dealers capitalize on reviews, and that's helping managers and salespeople understand that the value of that as it pertains to their personal business. Until there's a direct correlation or causation in the mind of a salesperson or manager about the power of reviews and their personal income and success, they don't seem to put any effort into it. You know, we can appreciate 
that if I don't show numbers to a customer, there's a very low chance I'll sell them a car. It's very hard to sell a car to somebody unless you present them an offer to do business. So there's a direct, if you will, co correlation and causation there. You know, it's like if I present more numbers to more people, then the chances are I will sell more cars. So that seems obvious, and so you should do that. But what the dealer, manager, salesperson doesn't necessarily see is the correlation or causation between capturing and securing a tremendous amount of positive reviews and the direct impact it has on their personal business. We understand it maybe conceptually, but we're not necessarily leveraging it. And so what I want to do today in this conversation with you guys is I want to share with dealers the, the direct relationship between reviews and sales and how to make that relationship a more strong relationship in the mind of your sales team and in the rest of your staff so that everybody understands that when we create a culture of capturing reviews, we transform the way we go about our business and ultimately make everybody's life way easier. So by way of introduction, that's my goal for today. And uh, so Peter, I'll let you take it from there and tell me what do you, what do you want to talk about first? Okay. And you know, Jonathan, you hit the nail right on the head and the direct correlation with the online reputation and the online reviews and why it's so important. And a lot of dealerships are starting to see this, but it's really important for the salespeople. And I agree with you completely because the biggest reason why it is so important is Google, who is the, you know, the 500 pound gorilla when it comes to SEO is now incorporating the online reputation of the dealership into the algorithm. So it yeah. really becomes a team effort. And if the team isn't doing a good job and the dealership doesn't have good online reviews, they're not going to be found online. And it's going to affect how many people come into the dealership and ultimately affect how many cars are sold by the actual sales team. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I agree with you a thousand percent there. I, I think that um, it has to start at the top. If you're, if you're listening to this uh, uh, webinar right now, if you're watching the webinar, if you're on Periscope with me right now, I really want to, if you're a member of the management team, I want you to start thinking intentionally about the power of the social proof aspect of reviews to catapult your business. I know you understand this because you've looked at movie reviews to determine whether or not you should watch a movie. We've all driven um, past a restaurant or to a restaurant, and if it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon and there's no cars in the parking lot, we don't have to walk in to ask, hey, why don't you guys have any business? We just automatically assume that if it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon and there's no cars at a restaurant, there's a reason why there's no cars at the restaurant. We can go right past that restaurant. So what we want to do is leverage these resources, all these different review sites, which I know we'll get into detail on, on some of them and how to um, prioritize what, where you should attack as far as getting reviews. But we need to prioritize the importance of building that massive online presence with our, um, with our community, our local uh, sphere of influence, because when people are going on, whether it's uh, maps on their iPhone or wherever they're going, those reviews are going to show up. If they're doing a search for a particular car, those review sites are going to show up. And whoever dominates that space, the first one to own that, mind, that market mind share is going to crush their competition over the next six months to nine months to a year. It's going to be so significant. Um, I want to, if I can real quick, I want to um, just start by, by saying a little bit about uh, how to ask for reviews. Is that okay if we go there right now? That's please perfect. And, please and thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I really believe that asking for reviews starts subtly and it starts in the beginning. And that can even include, for example, um, if your dealership has a good reputation right now, when you Google search yourself, if your reviews uh, are good, even if you don't have a lot of them, but if you have a quality review uh, presence, you can actually incorporate that into the way that your receptionist answers the phone. So what we want to do is we want to start planting subtle seeds that people trust us and people do business with us, and you should too. And people trust us and do business with us and write reviews, and therefore you should too. You want to start with that from the, from the very beginning, and you can incorporate that even into the way your receptionist starts the, the, the phone call when they take incoming calls. For example, you could have a receptionist who says something like, you know, thank you for calling the award-winning highest-reviewed dealership in all of blank city. Um, incorporating that into even the way she starts the call is a subtle, almost subconscious seed planting uh, for the customer. Hey, these people apparently are a big deal. And if they hear that from the beginning, and then of course, if in the salesperson interaction, the salesperson adds that to their verbiage, or the service writer adds that to their verbiage, are, are you guys familiar with this? Because you've seen some of our online reviews. 
asking that question, if of course you already have a decent presence online, asking that question is a powerful way to start the seed planting that we need reviews, use reviews, and appreciate reviews. So as a salesperson, I could start that as part of my opening uh, salvo and out in the earth, you know, asking folks, you know, so folks, how did you end up finding our dealership? Did you find us because of our great online reviews? That simple question, even if the customer says, no, that's not how I found you, lets the customer know that reviews are something that you appreciate and value. Same thing with they could ask the same kind of question. When you plant that seed early and then later on when a customer compliments something about your dealership or compliments something about your process, if a customer says, wow, I really appreciate the way you guys conduct yourselves or thanks so much for getting that car for me or thanks so much for doing X, Y, Z for me or you guys, wow, you guys are really fast or you're really professional, you, you know, again, leveraging those little opportunities to say, you know what, thank you. That's the kind of things our customers share on our reviews, on our online reviews. You know, if you would take the time to share that in an online review, we'd appreciate that. Even just simple seed planting like that is not being done at the average dealership and it's a shame because it literally takes like less than one second to say something like that. It takes two seconds to say something like that. You get you. Why not incorporate that? Why not train on that? Why not teach your people to think this way and, uh, and, and incorporate that into the process? So the first thing I would say is we need to start asking for reviews subtly and subconsciously by planting these seeds. The second thing I think we need to do is we need to make sure that we let customers who, who are at our dealership know that reviews are, pop, are, are important to us by, by um, passive assets or passive marketing messages. And that includes things like little postcards, signage, um, you know, again, if you have a decent review count already, uh, some signs up throughout the store and at the service department, parts department, just throughout the store, a couple signs that say, thank you for, thank you for making us one of the highest reviewed dealerships in the state. Thank you for making us one of the best reviewed dealerships in our city. Thank you for making one, uh, us one of the best reviewed dealerships um, for our brand. Whatever it is, if you've got that already building, leverage that by telling people passively that this is something we appreciate, we value, and all of these little subtle um, signals will help somebody when you do formally ask them for the review, it'll make it easier for them to do it. Once again, social proof is what people look for in order to make a decision. They want to know if I do this, have other people already done it? And if they've already done it, it's safe for me to do it too. So the more you say most of our customers come to us through reviews or many of our customers choose us because of our great reviews, that wording, most, many, uh, a lot of our customers, that wording is telling people, hey, you're not alone. Other people trust us. You should trust us too. Hey, John. Yeah. John, uh, Ron Mack here. And um, I am enthralled uh, by your presentation so far. Now, I've got to ask you a question. I think it's nugget time. And one of the nuggets you threw at me when, you first, when we first met was the, if you don't believe me, Google me. Yeah. Uh, can you throw out a little business card nugget? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Let me give you a couple of things that uh, again salespeople will be able to use to uh, to leverage uh, leverage reviews and turn them into opportunities and to grow their market awareness. You know, Ron's referring to a phrase um, that I teach my students to use, which is to say, "Don't take my word for it. Google me." In fact, on the back of business cards, many of my salespeople that I train have that phrase on the back of their business card: "Don't take my word for it. Google me." Uh, now, this actually is a technique that I, I hinted at earlier. I said, you know, one of my students is the most reviewed, highest reviewed salesperson in the world, according to Dealer Raider. Out of 144,000 salespeople, Chip Gruder, the owner, president of Dealer Raider, did an audit. Uh, I requested him to do the audit because I was pretty sure she was the best. And he did an internal audit and found out, yeah, by more than half, she's the best reviewed salesperson in the entire world out of 144,000. Now, one of the things I taught Linda, this is a few years ago that I taught her this, is I taught her the power of asking for reviews, using some of the things I've just shared with you, being subtle and being, you know, proactive with it. And then I told her, I said, once your reviews become Googleable, when you, Linda, her name is Linda Radu, anybody listening to this broadcast, if you're on the webinar, if you're on Periscope with me, I want you to write down a name if you can, Linda, L-I-N-D-A, and then Radu, R A D. U -E. And when you put that name into Google, when you put that name into Google, what you'll notice is you won't even have to spell the complete name. By the time you get to the R-A-D, you're going to see that Google will predictively ask you if you're looking for Linda Redoux. 
Why? Because she's been Googled so many times that Google thinks if you're looking for a Linda R, you're probably looking for Linda Redu. Now, what I taught Linda was you have to start by having a base of reviews, and then you need to make sure your reviews are Googleable. How do you do that? Well, what Google does is many of you know, search engines in general, they're text matching search in the, the algorithms. That's all they are. They're looking for a group of text that you put in, and they're saying, where in the internet do I find that group of text? Where does that show up? Well, in this case, what Linda didn't realize is her reviews were being written like this. This is, by the way, don't have reviews written this way. This is, this is what not to do. Her reviews were written this way. Linda was amazing. I bought a card from Linda, and I can't, you know, can't, you know, stop talking about how amazing Linda was. Well, here's the problem with a great review like that. The word Linda, right, in, in search, you know, there's like a bazillion Lindas in the world. So I said, Linda, you need to have your name put into the review twice organically by the customer in the review. So this is, again, now this is like five, six years ago I taught her this. So I said, you need to have your name in there twice. So the customer needs to say Linda Radu was amazing. I bought my car from Linda Radu, and she was the best salesperson on the planet. By having your name written in there organically twice, the search engines will know that Linda Redu uh, is important. And so when somebody searches on Google for Linda Redu, they're going to go, where in the world on the internet do we find that group of words, Linda Redu? And they're going to say, oh, apparently it's all over the place in these reviews. So it'll rank her reviews to the top. Well, that only took a few months. And by doing that, she then uh, essentially took all of the reviews she had, having just a couple of months of them written properly, ranked her reviews to the top of Google whenever anybody searched for her name. Well, what happened then is I said, now that we have top ranking presence when somebody Googles you, we need to now tell everybody to Google you. And so on the back of her business card, it said, don't take my word for it, Google me. Also, in every email signature she sent out uh, for any emails, it says, you know, don't take my word for it, Google me. If she would set a phone appointment with somebody on the phone when she was setting the appointment, she'd say, listen, I know you have choices in the marketplace of who you can do business with. I can tell you till I'm blue in the face that you should trust me, but you don't know me. I'm just a car salesman, so don't take my word for it. Google me. And people would Google Linda before they would come in for the appointment. They would Google her uh, from her email signature. They'd Google her from her uh, her phone uh, conversation with them. She'd, she'd do it on a voicemail. And what happened is over time, the more people that Googled her, not only did it raise her ranking so that she's now predictive, but it also meant that people would see the reviews. And like I just said earlier, when somebody sees that other people are reviewing you, it gives them the social proof they need to feel like they should review you too. So it becomes a snowballing effect. So now she personally has something close to a thousand personal reviews. On Dealerator alone, she has almost 600 personal reviews. She has more reviews as an individual salesman than most dealerships combined have for their entire dealership because she's intentional about reviews. Now what happened was that leverage, that social proof created for her uh, such an amazing rapport and trust with her, her clients and the prospective clients that she began to accelerate her sales and she went from being a 25 to 35 a car a month person to now her personal best is 59 and a half and uh, she talks all the time about the power of, of, of reviews but I want to uh, clarify real quick Ron very quickly about that I no longer teach that you have to have your name in there twice I don't teach that anymore that was what I taught five years ago six years ago but now I teach the importance of having a branded hashtag an individual salesman or an individual dealership or an individual service department hashtag. When the review is written, the review has to have the branded hashtag. If you don't understand how hashtags work, let me give you the you know the 10 seconds you know deal. Okay, search engines are matching text. They're taking what you type into search on Google. When you type a Google search and you hit send, it's checking the entire internet looking for that sequence of letters. A hashtag allows you to have the ability to make a very unique sequence of letters. So whenever you put hashtag, you know, um, whatever into, into a search, as long as no one else is really using that hashtag, you will own the domination of the internet on searchability. You'll own that, which means anybody who types in your branded hashtag, everything that shows up will be yours. So if they're, as an individual salesman, for example, I have, you know, salespeople hashtag Kenny Landrum or hashtag King Stinson or hashtag Nate Dion or all these sales students I teach, you can put any of those into Google and they will literally dominate pages of content because they branded that hashtag for searchability. So when a review is written now, the review has to include the salesperson's branded hashtag, the dealership, 
uh, if it's a service advisor, service writer, have a customized hashtag that your dealership service department uses. And then when you're telling people to search, for example, if I'm setting up a service department appointment, I could tell that person on the phone, hey, listen, before you come in, you know, this is your first time doing business with our dealership. Would you please do me the favor of, of uh, you know, don't take our word for it. Google us before you come in and see what people say about the way we take care of their car and, and, and them. And then somebody can, you know, search hashtag, you know, um, whatever service department and come up with just a custom branded hashtag for your dealership for each of the departments you want to elevate their review count. Does that help, Ron? And, and that, that is such a powerful tip right there, and I hope everybody really takes a point of writing that down because one of the challenges we have with this online reputation business and the online review situation is the review sites tend to like bad reviews and a lot of the people that are attending the webinar today you know yeah. have contacted us previously and said hey we've got some problems we've got some bad reviews and by getting more positive reviews and using this process yes. we'll be able to push those negative reviews down and now what's going to be showing up when somebody searches for the store or searches for that specific salesperson is positive things and it's important that we point that out to these people that are joining us today because a lot of times they don't realize that these negative reviews because the way that the review engines are set up, they want to push the negative up to the front because their feeling is anything good that's being said probably isn't true. And right. that's why it's important to make sure you get as many positives. So I love what you're telling people. Yeah, well, and I want to share with you, if you're again taking notes on this webinar or if you're watching through Periscope right now with me and you're following along, I want to share with you a very simple way to coach reviews if a customer does say to you, yes, I'm willing to write a review for you. I really only give, you know, you know, a couple of basic, um, you know, structured, you know, kind of, uh, here's what I want you to do. What I tell my clients is I say this, you know, folks, the best reviews, the best reviews are a story. So a lot of people, they'll write a review and they'll do like five stars and they'll say, these guys are great, which is fine. And I take that over nothing. But I want my, I want when I'm teaching salespeople, here's what you tell a customer. Tell a customer, here's the best kind of review for me. If you're going to take the time to write a review, here's the best review. The best reviews are stories. So if you can tell a story, here's the best kind of story. If you guys remember The Christmas Carol, you know, you, maybe you remember that movie or the book, The Christmas Carol. Um, at, at one point, the, the, the main character, Ebenezer, is visited by three ghosts. Uh, now, uh, Peter, Ron, do you guys remember what three ghosts are that visit um, Ebenezer? I believe that was the, the ghost of uh, Christmas past, present, and future, right? That's exactly right. So yeah, yeah. what I do is I tell the customer, I tell the customer that. I say, you know, the best reviews are stories, and the best stories are like the Christmas Carol. They have a past, present, and future. So what I would like you to do if you would write me a review is I'd like you to write a review about where you were in the past. So, for example, if it's a sales experience review, I might say something like this. Folks, if you could write a review that says something like this, before I met John Dawson to buy a car, I hated buying cars. I had been to several stores, and this and this and this had happened to me. That's the past. Then, present, I just bought a car from John, and I'm so happy that I did. He was amazing. He took great care of me, and I really enjoyed my experience. Future. I would recommend anybody to go there and do business with him, and if you're reading this and thinking about doing business in the future and buying a car, please go see John. That's the basis of the structure of a great story, the past, the present, and the future. You know, what happened before, what happened now, and what, what I, you know, what's going to happen next. So when I tell my clients to get reviews, if you're going to coach them in any way, simply coach them. Look, a best, the best reviews are stories. The best stories have a past, a present, and a future, just like the Christmas Carol. When you write your review, could you please tell a little bit about where you were before you met us, what's your experiences in the past, what your thoughts are about your experience with us, and what you would recommend anybody in the future to do. And then the last component of the coaching, this, you know, is and hashtag. And then depending on what department I'm talking to, I'm going to at that point say, hey, will you please incorporate this branded hashtag in your review? And then tell me exactly what that branded hashtag would be. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Well, I don't know what that was. All right, All right. it's gone now. Okay. Hey, John. Yeah. Um, so uh, just a quick review here. You've given us uh, a great way to come up with a great review. Um, I know you're the king of uh, branding. 
I tell you what, that's one thing, if anything, that I think you are the absolute best in the world at branding, and um, I'm sure your head's swelling a little bit right now because I'm sure you're nodding and agreeing with me. Uh, I am. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, and he also have given us an opportunity to hit the reset button. Yeah. Uh, I branded hashtags and say, please give us a review at Heritage uh, Chrysler Service. Could yeah. Be your, could be a branded hashtag. Am I correct? Yeah. In fact, the best way to find a, a, a perfect branded hashtag is to go to Google and type in pound sign or hashtag. Type in that. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to put in whatever the search terms are that you would want your branded hashtag to be. So, for example, if, I, if I'm a Ford dealer uh, service department and I want to have reviews that are specialized for our service department that are searchable, I might put in, for example, hashtag uh, best Ford service and just throw that into Google and see how many searches come up under that. Ideally, the best ones will actually say no search results found. If you could come up with a hashtag that when you put it into Google, it says no search results found. What that actually means is that means in the entire internet, in the entire world of the internet, no one has ever used those characters in that order before in the internet online, which is incredibly powerful because that means if you begin to use it within a few hours, that search term will rank at the top and the only rank on an entire page of Google search. So if somebody put in you know, a, a Google search for your branded hashtag and you started with one that had no results found, within three or four hours, someone who searches that same hashtag, the only content on the entire page will be yours. And when you think about the dominance that will give your, you as a market competition, if you own hashtags that way, where you're telling people search this hashtag, the only content they'll find is your content on all of Google. It's insane. Good. Well, what we want to do, because you've given us some great information, and what we want to do now is we want to segue a little bit into what we have found is a great way, because it's, we've learned a lot about how to ask for the review when you're with the person, what yeah. we have found is it's also very powerful to reach out to the people via email. We're going to show you an email solution and some ideas and things that we've developed and ideas that we have that we think could be beneficial. So we're going to segue into a little bit. And what we have found is, as we mentioned earlier, you want to ask a review from everybody. A lot of times people won't give it to you right then and there. Yeah. But a very Absolutely. good way to do that is by Peter. using an email. Yeah, Peter, if I can right now, just to share with uh, those who are watching, yeah, you're exactly right. Up until now, I've been talking primarily about, you know, ways you set the stage to ask for the view even while they're at the store. But you're 100% correct, Peter. The average person will leave the dealership with good intentions of doing it, and then life hits them, you know, and they have groceries they got to buy, they got kids they got to take to school, they got all this stuff happening. And, and even though maybe at the time of the deal it didn't make sense for them to you know, give you the review right there, and there are ways to try to get that, but probably 80% of people will leave with the thought, I should do it and I will do it, but unless there's some sort of reminder, unless there's some sort of, as you're about to share, email that goes out with a step-by-step -step simple way for them to take action on their good intentions, they're probably not going to give you as many as you could get. So what you're about to share is so critical Dealers have to have a solution by which clients, customers, happy customers, can be re-invited to write reviews. Even if they give you one at the store, you might want three or four more from them. And if they're giving you one before, um, they might be willing to do more if you email them a simple way for them to take action on that. So I'm excited about what you're about to share with this powerful resource of dealer influence. Great. And we appreciate it. And what we have found that works so well, because as we all know, everybody loves video. So if you have the ability to send a video email, but the key with the video, because if, remember one of the earlier slides we talked about how the negative views pop up. What we want you to include in this email is some way for you to ask them if for some reason you're not satisfied. We want them to contact you directly, and we're going to show you that in a few slides. But the key thing is by addressing their problem privately, it reduces the number of negative reviews that are published up there. We want to get as many positives and re remove as many negatives. And here's what the audio and here's what the, the video actually looks like. 
Hi, I'm Laura with D&D Ford Motors, and we thank you for your business. One of the greatest gifts you could give us is to simply let us know how we're doing. Please click on any one of the review site buttons below and share your experience. If for any reason you are unsatisfied, we want to make it right. Click on the Not Satisfied link below, and we'll follow up with you shortly. Thank you from all of us at D&D Ford Motors. Now, uh, the, key, the key for me, Jonathan, I, I was successful capturing um, uh, good reviews as well. I would love to have a follow-up system designed this way. And what we do here at Dealer Influence is we contact everybody in the dealership. If they've done, if they bought a car from you, or they uh, service with you, we'll send out an email to everybody. That way, we won't miss asking because there's a lot of green peas out there that are afraid to ask for a review, just based out of fear. And uh, what our solution is is it gives them an opportunity to click on either three three different sites, um, and we'll touch base on uh, what's your what's your favorite ones. My personally is Google is king. Uh, Yelp is very important. Uh, it's been proven that uh, good Yelp reviews will increase your revenue. And for me personally, the third third one is Cars.com because it's the easiest one to neg to navigate leaving a review. And here's an example with uh, with one of our emails. If somebody is not satisfied, they click on the not satisfied button. It's going to take them to a separate landing page where they can vent their frustration or their disappointment with the dealership. Because what we do is we find that it's usually a communication problem. Now, in the sales end of it, uh, Jonathan, I'm sure you're aware of it, the communication, if, if there's a breakdown in communication, that could usually cost you, cost you a sale. Also, with um, reviews, if there's a breakdown in communication, it clearly comes up uh, in the not satisfied submissions. And the importance of this is by keeping this dialogue private, it prevents things like this. And these are actual submissions, and some of them are pretty bad, that were prevented by utilizing a process where you ask for people to contact you directly. Because you don't want stuff like this to get published up on any of the review sites. But what happens, the way we do this, and what we recommend is having a way where it can be in a private forum. And this is an example of what you would receive at your dealership. So this customer, as you can see, was unhappy, they had a great experience in making the purchase. However, we drove off the lot, and now they're getting into the negativity. The beautiful thing about when you provide a forum, a dialogue in a private setting, you are preventing bad things like this from being published on the Internet. And as you know, once it's published, you can never get it down. Now, here's another part of the process. Uh, we have an autoresponder set up to respond to the unsatisfied customer to let them know that their review has been seen and a member from their customer satisfaction team will be getting back in touch with them. And the key here, folks, and this is one of the takeaways I want you to take away, whether you use our service or someone else's service or you just try to do it yourself, you have to have a plan in place because the worst thing that we have seen is having clients be notified of somebody who's unhappy and they ignore the problem. Because now what happens is the problem just escalates. So you want to make sure you have a team in place to handle the situation and resolve it. Great. Now we just touched base on a few of the few of the negative things that can happen and how to how to respond and our our process on how we respond to a communication breakdown. Jonathan, why don't you build us back up with something positive here? Well, I mean, the positive side is, is, like I said, is that, you know, when reviews are, are leveraged properly, um, they, tr they completely transform the customer experience, uh, turning strangers into um, willing, willing prospects. You know, it's so important that we, as, as uh, dealership staff, leaders, managers on the, on, on the webinar with us, it's so important that we understand that, that there's more value to it than just a marketing SEO benefit. There's more value to it than just, you know, it makes customers, you know, easier to convert. Um, the reality is when you have a sales team that builds a business based on repeat referral and self-generated traffic because their market awareness in the marketplace is so strong and positive, it, it creates job satisfaction, which reduces turnover. It, it, it increases close ratios, which increases profitability. 
it, it changes the dynamic of all of your staff. And corporately, if you become the dominant force in your marketplace where when somebody thinks of a good experience buying a car, they think of you, or when they do a search that you dominate the page of that brand that they're searching for with positive reviews, when you put all those pieces together, and it doesn't take that long, um, you can start to see a, tr a transformation in, in your turnover, you see a transformation in profitability, your ease of sale conversion. Um, everybody wins when we sell through, uh, through reviews. Exactly. And with going back to getting these reviews, and one of the first questions we had gotten earlier in this was something related to mobile enabled. And one of the key factors in this process, and this hopefully will be another takeaway for you, when you're sending out emails asking for reviews, it's critical that your emails are mobile enabled because 66% of the people today are reading their emails on a mobile device. And the reason why that's so important when it comes to online reviews, most review sites have mobile apps. So if you send them an email and it's mobile enabled, it's literally one click away for them to then be able to leave your review. The key that we have found to making uh, reviews stick and getting more reviews is having it easy for the person to leave a review. No question. And what you see up on the screen, folks, is an example of a non-mobile responsive email. It's a pinch to zoom. It's difficult to navigate. And I can tell you 78% of customers, and myself included, when I see one, I delete it. And this is kind of what, what you see when we send one out. It's a little bit different. The key couple things are the video will play in the email. The phone number is click activated, but most importantly, they can click on any of those buttons, whether that's not satisfied, Google, Yelp, or um, cars.com, and they can actually go and right from their phone leave a review. No question about it. Now, uh, a quick, quick question, um, quick topic, and uh, another four-letter word in the car business is Yelp, Y-E-L-P. And most dealers that uh, I've touched base with and tried to assist uh, have an issue with Yelp and it's how to, to go ahead and get their Yelp reviews to stick. Um, and it, you have to understand Yelp to, to get the general feel and uh, what Yelp is all about. Now, Yelp is connected to Siri, which means half of all iPhone, uh, smartphone owners have an iPhone. So if you're not, uh, if you don't have an active Yelp page and monitoring your Yelp page, you're invisible to your clients. And one of the things, Jonathan, John, you may want to just reiterate that a little bit. One of the things you mentioned earlier in your presentation, which was right dead on the money, was about having some point of purchase materials throughout the dealership to encourage people to leave reviews. And I think having materials relative to Yelp is pretty important because if they make a review or if they check in on Yelp at the dealership, it's going to have added value. Do you want to expand on that a little bit for us today? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic point, again, uh, Peter, that you, you bring up. So, so of your marketing material, again, you, you've got to have targets for what you're looking for. So, for example, if I'm, if I'm looking to increase my Yelp, which everybody should be, if you're looking to increase your Yelp, you need to have some Yelp uh, logos and some Yelp material around the dealership that says, if you're a Yelper, um, will you share your experience about our store? Um, and, and encouraging people who might be sitting in your service department, a lounge right now, and if you've got you know 30 people visiting your service department in a day, or 300, depending on you know, how big your store is, but if you've got a bunch of people visiting your dealership uh, any given day or, or, or week, out of them, there's a good chance that you know 20%, 10% of those are legit Yelpers. And if you've got people who are real Yelpers, and they're sitting in your service department experiencing your dealership and having a good experience, they need to be invited to check in on Yelp, let people know that they're there, and then to share their story and increase your Yelp reviews. If and when you get to a point where you have a high enough Yelp count of both reviews and, and positive reviews, man, leveraging that and marketing directly to Yelpers, Yelpers is like its own little cult. Um, they're their own little niche cult of, uh, you know, some people who are on Yelp, I mean, they, they look at that like it's the Bible. So if you can dominate Yelp reviews, um, you can own all of those customers and they'll continue to, to bring in um, more traffic. So be intentional about the, the types of reviews that you want. I know that with uh, dealer influence, you can actually um, identify which types of review sites you want prioritized in your email that you send out. So if, you, if you're looking for more Yelp reviews, you can rank that as the first link that you ask people to do. Also consider taking your existing database of customers and sending out an email that says, you know, hey, have you shared your story about your experience with our dealership? Would you please 
uh, consider doing so now. And again, taking an email that's structured like the one that we just mm -hmm. saw and sending that out to your database of customers, um, these are all important steps that you can take to grow your business. Okay, John, and one of the key things uh, to wrap up with Yelp is if you're not a Yelper and you want to understand how to Yelp, it's time to become a Yelper. So open up a Yelp account. Start checking in at local businesses. You'll see the advertisements from the other uh, dealerships in your competition, whether it be a, 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 whether you're at a restaurant, whether you're at a gas station, a service station, your dealership, wherever you can check in at Yelp, check in at Yelp and get used to it. And guess what? You'll start getting followers on your on your Yelp page. Exactly. So kind of as we come to the close of this presentation, a couple things we want you to take away is you need to put a plan in place, start reaching out and communicating with the customers and asking for the reviews. And we've got, you know, Jonathan, who is the master at asking for reviews. So at this point, we want to thank everybody for their time. If you'd like to get any more information, please contact us. We'll put our contact information up in a couple seconds. But at this point, we want to open up floor up for questions and answers. Just type in your questions. Um, I'll read them out loud, and then Jonathan and Ron can answer them for everybody. If you would like a copy of this PowerPoint presentation, feel free to reach out to Ron. His contact information will be up there, and he'll be send, send it to you. No, no obligation. Just want to provide as much information to you as we can. So let's open up for some questions. Yeah, and while we're waiting for those questions to come through uh, as well, Peter, I just want to, for those of you who might be watching who are sales uh, managers uh, or salespeople and you're interested in learning about how some of, some of my students are, get, are leveraging reviews to sell more cars, I want to invite you to join my Facebook group as well. I have a group on Facebook called Six Figure Sales Strategies Group. And when you type that into your Facebook search bar at the top mm -hmm. of Facebook, you'll just type in the word six, S-I-X, then space, figure, and then sales strategies. A group will show up in your search feature um, that will have a, a, a closed group icon. Click on that and ask to join group. I'll be happy to invite you into the group. It's an automotive only resource for strategies and tips and, and techniques, and it's got like 2,500 top performing salespeople and, and people who are leveraging some of these tools from all over the, uh, all over the world, now we have New Zealand, Canada, all over the place. So please uh, join that group as well on Facebook. Uh, just go to Facebook search and type in uh, SIX space F-I-G-U-R-E space sales strategies. Uh, join that group and I'd be happy to interact with you there as well. And you can see some of these salespeople I'm talking about. And here's the first question and we've got Jonathan's information up there if you'd like to write that down. Uh, this one is for Jonathan actually. It's does Linda sell cars monthly based off her reviews? Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, there's a great, uh, if you want to, um, if you want to just go to Google and type in, um, type in Cellcology uh, and that's on All right, Jonathan, you broke up there a second. You with me? H-O-L-O-G. Hello? You're breaking up a little bit on, on me, Jonathan. I've got you guys. Okay. Okay. okay I great. can hear you guys. I've got good audio. Have you guys got me or no? Yep, you're we good. I can hear you now, yeah? You're good. Okay, fantastic. Sorry about that. So what I was saying was if you go to Google and type in Cellcology, uh, again, that's spelled S-E-L-L-C-H-O, L-O-G-Y, and then space Linda Redu, there's an actual recording on SoundCloud. You can actually listen to the interview where Linda shares her personal story as I interview her about her success. But yeah, she sells cars directly from her reviews, and she does that in a few ways. Like I said, one of the ways she does it is because people will Google search for the dealership, and she has such dominance on her online searchability that she shows up when people search for the dealership. So she shows up when people search you know, so for the brand, she still shows up. Um, looks like there's a, sorry, there was an audio spike there. Um, but well, The next question just came across is, um, can you use more than one hashtag, like the name, yeah. your name, and the dealership? Absolutely. In fact, yeah, I have students who, who use multiple hashtags. Again, when it comes to hashtags, it's a, it's a very un, un, um, un, misunderstood, I should say, misunderstood. Underutilized tool. 
the, the way hashtags work is you don't actually own it, which means, you know, I mean, I suppose like Coca-Cola could technically own hashtag Coca-Cola because they, they can trademark that, I guess. But, but no, you don't really own it. What you do is you just use it. So you can take any hashtag that you want, any sequence of letters. In fact, what's interesting, again, if, if, if you put any configuration of letters into Google, any, it doesn't matter, it could be random keyboard strokes, Google will search the entire internet for that same random sequence of keystrokes. Now, if you wanted to, you can do that with hashtag. You can take hashtag and put in any phrase and search it. If it shows up, no results found, then that means no one in the history of the internet has published anything online using that sequence. So yes, you can have multiple, you can have three, four, I mean, I have several hashtags. I have, of course, hashtag psychology, hashtag psychology um, sales, hashtag psychology marketing, hashtag, I mean, I've got all these mm -hmm. hashtags. So I've got my own and my students um, use them as well. And again, depending on what your content is you're publishing, like for example, if you're publishing videos, you, let's say you get YouTube videos, you get testimonials, you wanna make sure your hashtags are in the title description and the tags of those videos because then those videos become searchable under that same hashtag search uh, term. So yes, you can have multiple ones. You can have a thousand of them theoretically, but you wouldn't want to. You just wanna maybe have three or four dominant ones that you use depending on the content that you're uh, trying to publish. Awesome. Well, fantastic. Jonathan, I can't thank you enough for, for spending some time with us and, and giving some of our clientele and some of your clientele the extra coaching that they need to, to get to the top because uh, ever since we, we met you at, at uh, NADA, I've been a strong follower, follower of you and a supporter uh, for what you bring to the table for salespeople. I was so excited after I met you. I wanted to get back in the car business. Um, sales wise and Peter just wouldn't let me do it <laughs> uh, so needless to say what we do is we have a solution for dealerships uh, with dealer influence we send out emails to their entire database everybody who does uh, does business with the dealership especially on the service end because uh, Jonathan is uh, sales based uh, you bring so much to the table with sales and I can't tell you how many of my dealers I've uh, tried to pump you up too, and and uh, if you folks want a copy of this presentation to get to your managers, to get to your marketing uh, directors, to your general managers, to your owners, to see something uh, to turn your uh, turn a negative uh, online reputation uh, around, uh, I think this is a great start. So we just. Uh you know, our contact information is up there. We'll leave it up on the screen. Feel free to email us. Anything we can ever do to help you um, succeed, you can either contact myself, Ron, or Jonathan. We're all here to help you. And we just want to thank you for joining us today. And, Jonathan, once again, from all of us over here at uh, Dealer Influence, we want to just thank you and uh, tell you how much we really appreciate all that you shared with us today. Well, thank you, guys. And in closing, uh, anybody who's watching this live with us, thank you for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Um, I consider it uh, an honor that you would take time out of your day to listen to this broadcast live. If you're listening to the recorded version of this, feel free to reach out to us if you want clarity on anything, uh, if I shared a technique and you want a little bit more understanding. Also, um, I'd be happy to give a webinar, a, a live stream Periscope or a broadcast, a Skype to your entire sales team and show with them and share with them these strategies as well. Again, I can be reached um, on my mobile number at 612-387-7776. That's my cell phone number there. Um, you can email me at jon at cellcology.com, S-E-L-L-C-H-O-L-O-G-Y.com, which is also my main domain, cellcology.com. And then join my Facebook group, the, the Six Figure Sales Strategies. I appreciate my mission is to save the world one salesperson at a time, and I appreciate the opportunity to do that through uh, through this broadcast. Thanks so much, Peter. Thanks, Ron. Hey, thanks for having us. Thanks for being on today, Jonathan. Thanks so much. Yep. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.